So hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Brookfield Renewable Partners. It's one of the largest renewable energy companies in the world and as the world as a whole transitions towards more renewable energy in the future, I believe it has a pretty solid shot in growing at a pretty solid rate. It has deals with Amazon and other companies to develop more renewable power assets in China, in Europe, in America and in South America as well. On top of this, it has production capacity of uh, hydro, wind and solar energy as well. So today we're going to be doing a stock analysis on this company. Uh, we're going to be looking at where it can grow in the future, uh, the deals it has with other companies, its upcoming assets that it's developing all across the world. And at the end, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis and seeing whether this stock is a buy. If you do enjoy, consider subscribing. It is free and it does help me out a ton. If not, thanks for watching anyway. On to the video. So if we look at the long term for Brookfield Renewable, it has had a pretty quiet first part of its lifestyle. It was up about 200% in about 20 years, uh, but it really started to take off in 2019. And at the beginning of 2021, it was trading at close to $50. Since then, the stock is down about 20% and is now trading at close to $36 right now. Um, I believe this company has a pretty solid potential to grow in the future. Uh, we're going to be looking at some stock analysis uh, and we're also going to be looking at their investor day presentation and where they believe they can grow into the future as well. So currently, the company is capable of generating more than 20,000 megawatts of clean energy from sources including hydroelectric, uh, wind energy, solar energy, and distributed generation as well. It operates more than 6,000 facilities on four continents in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia as well. And with the influx of new investments, Brookfield Renewable Stock is optimally positioned. On top of this, they have quite a few business developments in the works as well. Uh, one of these is the Shepherd's Flat Wind Farm. It's in Northern Oregon, and it is one of the most significant onshore wind projects in the United States. As a result, Brookfield Renewable Partners agreed to buy it for $700 million in December of 2020. And in addition, Southern California Edison agreed to purchase power from the wind farm for the next 20 years. The reopening is expected to increase energy production at the 845 megawatt wind farm by about 25%. For instance, costs like Shepherd's Flat will help Brookfield's portfolio at a fraction for uh, add in for a fraction of the cost as well. Another one, they have a strategic Amazon partnership as well. Uh, at this point, any partnership with Amazon seems to be good news for investors. It's one of the world's largest corporate buyer of renewable energy. And once again, Brookfield is once again poised for an ex excellent return on its investment. The partnership aims to develop new renewable energy products in locations such as Brazil, Asia, North America, and Europe. And this puts Brookfield in a great position to continue selling energy to Amazon there as well. On top of this, Brookfield continues to make smart decisions that produce big results. The investment joins Apple's China Renewable Energy Fund to support the country's transition to net zero. This joint investment takes a 55% stake in China's wind portfolio and is capable of producing 213 megawatts of energy. Uh, they also have a partnership with Train Technologies, which is an innovative manufacturing company which is focused on building a better future. Uh, they recently joined forces in order to help customers meet their energy goals through decarbonization as a service. Uh, this is capable of creating a new revenue stream and as the product opens a new market that could be worth close to $600 billion in the future. So currently they have four main partnerships going on. Uh, they have one uh, where they're developing uh, or reopening a wind farm. Uh, they have uh, se uh, they have made deals with Amazon to sell some of their uh, energy to. Uh, they have taken a 55% stake in China's wind portfolio, which is one of the largest emitters in the world, and which would also mean uh, one of the largest growth potential as they transition away from uh, carbon uh, uh, from fossil fuels. Um, and another one with train technologies, which provides decarbonization as a service, which will open to a $600 billion market in the future. Um, and also has a very good return on investment there because a lot of companies and a lot of countries all around the world will be looking to decarbonize in the future there as well. Uh, the next thing we're going to be looking at is their investor day presentation. So if we scroll down here, uh, we can see 
that decarbonization, which I mentioned previously, is a global imperative. Uh, Canada committed to reduce emissions by at least 40 to 45 percent bef- below 2005 levels by 2030. Uh, U.S. re-entered the Paris Agreement and is committed to reduce uh, emissions by 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. Uh, UK has committed to emissions reductions of at least 68% below 1990 levels by 2030. Uh, The European Union has agreed to reduce emissions by at least 55% below 1990 levels by 2030. China has set emissions intensity targets of a 60 to 65% below 2005 levels by 2030. India has set emissions intensity target of 33 to 35% below 2005 levels by 2030. And Australia has also committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions by between 26 to 28% below 2005 levels by 2030. So as I was talking about previously, uh, decarbonization is something that's happening all across the world. And some of the largest polluters, including India, China, uh, and the US, have taken massive steps uh, towards reducing and the handful of countries in the European Union are also taking quite big steps there and we will see Brookfield obviously benefit from this uh, from the more than 6,000 and growing facilities that they have all around the world. Uh, So decarbonization has significantly accelerated over the last 18 months. If you look at the number of emissions committed uh, covered by net zero commitments, uh, which was 30% in January of 2020 to 70% by July of 2021, which is 2.5 times more emissions covered. Uh, if we continue scrolling down, we can see the number of countries with net zero uh, commitments has gone on from 21 to 131 countries over the last year and a half, which is more than six times the number of countries uh, that have net zero commitments. Uh, scrolling down further, uh, companies with net zero commitments, uh, which is arguably more important than countries as a whole, uh, have gone from 992 companies to more than 3,000 companies over the last year and a half, which is a three times increase in the number of companies which have net zero commitments. Uh, financial commitments to net zero has gone from 5 trillion in January of 2020 to more than 88 trillion in July of 2021, which is an 18 times increase. Uh, net zero is achievable with more than 60% of current carbon emissions can be abated with today's commercially available and viable technologies. Um, net zero requires immediate transformational change. Uh, so if we look at the path to net zero, a 45% carbon reduction from 2010 is needed to manage uh, global warming within 1.5 degrees Celsius. And if we achieve net zero by 2050, uh, we're looking at the greenhouse gas emissions going down to about uh, about 10 uh, uh, tons uh, or 10 uh, gigatons of carbon uh, CO2 emissions per year. Uh, an enormous investment is required. So uh, historical annual investment in renewable power per generation has averaged about 300 billion, but it is projected to uh, more than 3.5 to 5 trillion over the next 30 years. And as companies and countries start to subsidize uh, the transition towards uh, renewable energy, especially wind, solar, and hydroelectric, uh, we will see Brookfield being one of the largest players in this sphere, taking quite a big chunk of this investment. And that will obviously help them into growing their portfolio of facilities around the world at an even faster rate than they have been doing right now. Uh, so uh, all sectors will be impacted by CO2. We're looking at power going down from about uh, about 13 gigatons of CO2 to less than five. Uh, we're looking at industry also close to halving. So with transport and buildings will also reduce over the next few years. And because if it's such a wide amount of sectors that will be affected, we will see a greater amount of investment that will be put into the transition in re- of renewable energies in the future there as well. So they're creating an unparalleled commercial opportunity of more than $150 trillion of total investment over the next 30 years, which is a massive market opportunity. Uh, it won't be a $150 trillion market, but this investment will open and grow the market in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Brookfield Renewable uh, does take quite a big share of this, being one of the largest players in the field. Uh, clean energy 
Uh, clean energy and electrifications are the first, largest, and most impactful steps to achieving net zero, and more than 75% of emissions are attributed to energy and power generation. And because Brookfield operates in this biggest sector of uh, energy and power generations, they will be taking one of the largest return on investments as more people will be switching away and towards Brookfield Renewable away from fossil fuels in the years to come. Uh, decarbonization is a value creation opportunity. Uh, it has accelerated over the last 18 months. It requires a whole economy transition, creating the greatest o- uh, economic opportunity of our time with significant capital required. And clean energy capabilities will be essential and solution providers will create enormous value. Brookfield Renewable being one of the most prominent solution providers in the market right now. So if we look at the growth uh, in the future, so the global clean uh, Brookfield Renewable as a whole is a clean energy super major. It has more than 20,600 megawatts in North America, close to 12,500 megawatts in Europe, 12,600 megawatts in South America, and close to seven, uh, 5,700 megawatts uh, within Asia Pacific. It has global scale and reach. It has leadership in all the major technologies. It's leading operating and development uh, capabilities. It has an investment grade balance sheet and it has best in the class growth capabilities in the future as well. Um, and all of this doesn't, uh, does, uh, take into account, uh, the future developments as well. So all of this is not present as of right now, but if we take into account all their current operating assets plus the assets that are currently in development, then you get all of these uh, megawatts all around the world. Uh, they're leading platforms across all the world's major technologies. They currently have 8,000 megawatts operational uh, in hydroelectric power and more than 2,600 megawatts in development. Uh, wind is growing at an even faster rate. They have about 5,000 megawatts currently operational with more than 8,600 megawatts currently in development. Solar is by far their biggest growth factor. They currently have 2,200 megawatts in operational and more than 17,300 megawatts in development. And their transitions, they have 4,800 megawatts operational and close to 2,900 megawatts uh, in development. Uh, so they're supported by deep operational and uh, development expertise. They have more than 140 power marketing jobs, more than 6,000 renewable generating facilities, and they have 24-7 renewable power capabilities as well. On top of this, they have a very, very strong balance sheet. They have a BBB plus investment grade balance sheet and more than $3.3 billion in available liquidity. Uh, if we look at their pace of growth, they've deployed more than seven billion of equity capital uh, since 2012, and over the last few years, it has been exponentially increasing. They had less than a billion in 2012. By 2018, it was in four billion. 2020 was five billion, and in 2021, they're peaking about seven billion investment over the last eight years. Over the last 12 months, they have increased their distributing generation, they have repowered, they have offshore wind, and they have corporate partnerships with solar energy companies, including Amazon in the future. And this is translating into very, very strong cash flows for uh, Brookfield Renewable. Uh, between 2010 and 2020, they have a 10% compound annual growth rate uh, with their 48 uh, cents in 2010 and $1.45 in 2020. Uh, although this isn't the fastest growth, it is an amazing growth as well. But if you're looking at consistent growth with long-term potential, Brookfield Renewable is definitely the way to go. On top of this, the company does pay quarterly uh, dividends, which is another plus, which will increase your uh, investment uh, if you do buy shares of Brookfield Renewable. And this is set to increase in the years to come as more and more countries as we looked at previously, commit to net zero emissions by 2030 or 2050. And this will set to increase maybe 10, 15, maybe 20% compound annual growth rate in the next 15 or 20 years. Uh, They have also grown distributions for our investors. They have a 6% compound annual growth rate uh, between 2010 and 2021. And this is going from 67 cents to $1.22 here as well. Uh, the tail wells for renewables are stronger than ever. They have uh, decarbonization targets. They have a competitive cost structure. And on top of this, they also have increasing clean energy demand. And all of these three combined will increase their growth in the years to come. 
Uh, wind and solar are more uh, actionable and economic solutions are now uh, more compelling than they have been in the past. Uh, if we look at the cost per megawatt per hour, uh, we can see solar uh, and onshore wind have decreased. However, gas and coal have increased over the la uh, in 2021, and it has been reversing the trends over the last few years. So by 2030, we're looking at less than, uh, we're looking at maybe 30 to 40 uh, dollars um, per megawatt per hour uh, cost for uh, solar or wind, but gas is, and uh, gas will be close to 60, and coal is still expected to be peaking at about $150 per megawatt. Um, electrification is also driving the increased electricity demand. The U.S. electricity consumption is projected to increase by up to 80% by 2050. Uh, this will increase an, in, uh, an increase in electric consumption in commercial, in residential, in industrial and transportation. And the annual uh, electric consumption uh, will increase from about four, less than 4,000 uh, to about 7,000, which is an 80% increase. Uh, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is uh, uh, we're just going to be looking at a stock analysis of Brookfield Renewable. It has mostly hydro, solar and wind, ass wind assets with hydro being the biggest component, counting for roughly half. Wind contributes for about a quarter of the energy produced, solar about 15% with the 11% of the balance being distributed generation and storage. In the last five years, roughly two trillion has been invested into renewables. And according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, the next decade will require investments between five trillion and ten trillion to meet their commitments. Carbon reduction has become a global concern, and many countries and economies have pledged to make substantial investments to achieve net zero uh, energy product uh, production emissions. Uh, fortunately, the cost of renewable energy has decreased considerably and the levelized cost of energy from wind and solar is lower than what it was uh, in the past and it is also lower than combined cycle gas turbine, uh, turbine which is things such as gas and coal. So where is the future looking at for Brookfield Renewable? So this was what we were looking at earlier. Uh, hydro assets reign supreme for Brookfield Renewable at the moment, but this will change as more than 17,300 megawatts of solar, 2,900 megawatts transition development mature, and in it's an exciting time knowing that Brookfield is adding 31 gigawatts to the existing 21 gigawatts that they have. Uh, much of the transition development uh, involves distributed generation solar as the slide shows be uh, below their hydro is increasing from between 2015 and 2021 their hydro has gone from 0 0.6 gigawatts to 2.6 gigawatts their onshore wind has gone from 2.7 gigawatts to 5.8 gigawatts the utility sales uh, uh, utility scale solar is currently at 17.3 gigawatts their offshore wind is 3 gigawatts their distributed generation solar is 2.3 gigawatts and other energy transitions and green hydrogen combined are 0 0.4 gigawatts. So in between 2015 and 2021, they have 10 times uh, the amount of gigawatts that they have going from about 3 gigawatts in 2015 to 31 gigawatts in 2021. So the last thing we're going to be looking at is just a quick technical analysis uh, for Brookfield Renewable. You can see the stock was relatively stagnant for between 2010 and 2019, but it really started to take off going from about $13 all the way to $50 at the beginning of 2021 before dropping down to about $38.85. Currently, the stock is trading below its 20 and 50 day simple moving average and is trading about uh, $2 below its current 50 day simple moving average and about $4 below its um uh, four dollars below its 20 day simple moving average um, which shows that the stock is currently trading at a pretty solid state where as compared to what it was in uh, January where it was trading more than uh, ten dollars higher uh, or 20 percent higher than its uh, 20 day simple moving average on top of this on top of it trading at a very solid rate um, their uh, trend lines show that it is still overall on an uptrend. Their 20 day simple moving average has increased dramatically. So is their 50 and 20 day simple moving average uh, has 
over the last few uh, over the last month or two their 20 day simple moving average has come down from about 42 to about 39 dollars but it still hasn't dipped below the 38 dollar mark for its 50 day simple moving average so the stock has not settled down to a downtrend uh it is not a downtrend right now and it is more prob more likely just a market correction due to how overpriced the stock was at the beginning of this year so that brings me to the end of uh this stock analysis i hope you guys enjoyed uh we looked at their growth into the future we looked at their investor day presentations we look at a future stock analysis and where the growth lies in the future for brookfield renewable if you do enjoy consider subscribing and if you did make it all the way this far let me know what you think about brookfield renewable uh and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye